wanted to share with you. Uh, so Bible Project, you've already been exposed to it. Yeah. Um, I watched this video. Um, what is the Bible before? I want to do the one, <clears throat> the story of the Bible with you. And we'll see if technology works. Yes. Bible is an important book, but it's really long. Yeah, it's a collection of many books written over a long period of time, but altogether they tell one unified story. So, what's the story of the Bible? Well, it begins by introducing us to a beautiful mind, the author of all reality, a being called God. And he has the power to take the dark chaos of the uncreated world and bring about order and beauty and a garden full of life. And to crown this accomplishment, God appoints these creatures called humanity. Or in Hebrew, Adam. And they're made as God's image. Which means that they're commissioned to rule this beautiful world on God's behalf by harnessing all of its potential and creating even more beauty and order. This is a story about humans using their power to do meaningful, life-giving work. But the question is, how? Yeah, humanity now faces a choice that's represented by a fruit tree. So humans could partner with God and find freedom by trusting in his knowledge of good and evil. Or they could seize power and define good and evil on their own, which, God warns, will kill them. And they hear the voice of a dark, mysterious creature that tells them the choice is simple. Take the fruit. It'll give you power and freedom to rule the world on your own terms. And so they seize this knowledge. And as a result, they become suspicious and self-protective. It leads to fractured relationships, violent power grabs, and ultimately a whole civilization, Babylon, that has redefined evil as good. And so God scatters this corrupted human project. And here the story of the Bible takes an important turn. We zoom in to the story of a man and a woman who come out of Babylon, Abraham and Sarah. Yeah, God promises that from them will come a new people, a nation that has another chance to make the right choice. And if they succeed, it will open up this new way forward for the rest of humanity. And this is why the rest of the Bible story is about this family. And it does not go well. Despite God's personal guidance, Abraham's family gives in to that same temptation to redefine good and evil on their own terms, apart from God. Even when their best people were in charge, rulers who loved God's guidance and had divine wisdom, even they gave in. And so Israel was warned by their own prophets that these choices would lead them back to Babylon, this time as conquered captives living in exile, and that's exactly what happened. So even with God's personal guidance, Israel fails. Who can succeed? Well, the prophet said that the story wasn't over. God's going to send a new leader to Israel to cover for their failures and to transform the people's hearts and minds so that they can make the right choice. And so the part of the Bible called the Old Testament ends, and these promises are left hanging. And then the biblical story continues into the New Testament. We're introduced to a man who comes from the line of Israel's kings, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said that he was bringing all these promises to their completion. He confronted that dark, mysterious evil that all humanity has given into and resisted its power. And then he announced that God had arrived to rule the world through himself. Jesus taught about God's definition of good and evil, and he said that real power is serving others. According to Jesus, it's people who love the poor and even love their enemies. These are the kinds of people who actually rule the world. And that's confusing, but also really beautiful. And so is the claim that the story goes on to make about Jesus, that he is God become human, to be for Israel and for all humanity what we could never be for ourselves. He came to take the consequences of our evil into himself, and his sacrificial love proved more powerful than evil, than even death itself. So now humanity's presented with a new choice. Represented by a new tree. Stick with the old way of being human, or venture into this new way. And in the story, those who choose the way of Jesus find themselves energized by God's own power. People who know that they are loved and forgiven by God can become people who love and forgive others in return. The Jesus movement quickly spread throughout the world, forming these new communities of people who follow the way of Jesus. But they faced problems. There was persecution from the outside by people in power, and inside there was confusion, even compromise. Yeah, because following Jesus is really hard. And so the movement's leaders, called apostles, they wrote letters to comfort and to challenge these communities to stay faithful to the difficult way of Jesus. And they're called to hope for the day when Jesus will come and change everything. 
And so the Bible ends by pointing to the future day when all wrongs are made right, when evil is eradicated, heaven and earth are united, and humanity can rule the world together in the love and power of God. Okay, so that's the story of the Bible and it brings all of these books together. But what's interesting is that each book contains a different kind of literature that contributes to the story in a unique way. And that's what the next video will begin to explore. What'd you think? I love it, man. I love it. They're good, aren't they? Amazing. Yeah. So good. Concise, but um, so helpful. What, What were some things that stuck out to you? Anything? Oh man, I, you know, stuff that we've already kind of been talking about, about how the idea of choice, I think is a big one, you know, just God gave us dignity, right? The dignity is the ability to choose. Yeah. Um, I think that's the big one, but I really like, I really like the idea of it's a new way to be human. Um, it's counterintuitive to our nature. Um, to be, because, you know, self-preserving, self-promoting, all that stuff. Um, But we actually find life when we serve. We actually find life, (laughs) you know, when, when we, when we put others' needs ahead of our own and somehow it works out that way. You know, it's kind of weird to even think about how, how that happens. But, um, but yeah, man, I, I love, I love the, I love the story of it. Have you have you watched any Bible project before at all? Oh yeah. You have uh so uh Tim Mackey, like he's just I don't know man. He's he's Yeah, I've watched this whole series. It's incredible. Yeah, they've got so, there's so much content out there. Um what you said right there, I, I don't want to lose my thought um from what you just said. You have you ever seen Stranger Things? Mhm. Never. Okay. No. Well, the rest of the world has. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. I, I'm joking. I get it, man. I don't yeah. Uh, it's, it's cool though. There's this, like these kids, whatever monster in this small town kind of storyline, but the demon or whatever that's after them, it's from this world called the upside down world. Okay. And like everything that's happening, like right now in our world and this story of stranger things, like there's another world literally like upside down, right on neath underneath it. And there's all this like dark and, and, um, you know, bad stuff going on. But with Jesus and what he presented and what, what God shows is that the kingdom is the upside down world. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's everything that we think flipped on its head. Yeah. You know, up is down. Like, hey, if you're going to send a king into the world to declare that he has victory over all things, you don't send him in a manger. You don't um, have him persecuted and tried to be killed. You don't, uh, you know, have him come from a, a poor region and and all these like, like anti-hero things, and then you definitely don't start a movement by being assassinated or killed on a cross, um, and then have you know these bumbling, excuse my language, idiots that are just like ourselves, you know, that are that are. You don't do it that way, mm-hmm. or at least that's what we think. It's right. upside down. Right. It's, it's 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 on the other side. And to follow through with that comparison, something that this video stuck out with me and that uh, has recently popped into my mind. When we, like Jesus talked about having our treasures in heaven, right? And he said, the kingdom of God is here now with you, right? So when we do things, like when we have interactions with someone less fortunate than ourselves, or we take a, uh, a chance and, and go into ministry and to a church and do these these things in life, you're affecting the upside down kingdom and we can't see it. Right. Right. Like it's like, you don't get a chance to really see what that means and what all it's going to do, mm-hmm. but it does mean, and, and, and on that other side, you know, it's like we plant a seed on this side and that the plant grows mm-hmm. on the other. Yeah. Right. And that it's just, it's that une- That's what I talked about with our friend Richard that we met out there. Who's kind of had all these sorrows. I'm like, dude, Before I said, like, Jesus is going to make it all better, I was like, that fucking sucks, man. I'm sorry for all that you've experienced and all that. Like, that does. That's not fair. It's not fair that that you lost your family the way that you did, and it's not fair that your wife died the way that she did and and for the pain that you felt. It's not 
fair. It's not fair for the children that get trafficked. It's not fair for, for the bloodshed that happens all across this earth. But in Christ, we have a hope that everything in the upside down world is going to be made right mm -hmm. in him. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it's not this like fantasy fairy tale. It's truth. It's, it's, it's what we have our anchor in to know that, you know, the, the, the widow or the orphan or the person that really just didn't get a good shake. Like me and you were both born in America. We're both born white. We're both born. Like we, we have privilege, like that we didn't even ask for that. We just have that, that some people in this world don't have, mm -hmm. and they're born. Like I have a friend over in Ghana. He might be listening to this. John, yeah, 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 John, my boy, he, uh, I talked to him on from time to time. I mean, he's, he's living in a, a, a hut, you know, scraping by for, for meals of, of different things. Like our life here, what I mean is like, and his life is beautiful and, and, and yeah. everything that they have there is beautiful to them. Yeah. But like, we have so much advantage here that we're just like, we just piss away. And, and we don't realize how unfair it is in a way. And, and, and that's the hope that's in this upside down kingdom is that, you know, what the, the struggles and the, the things that just aren't right, that's not fair, those are made right in the justice of what God has done in Jesus. And justice and judgment sounds scary to us because we watch Terminator 3. <laughs> but justice and judgment in the hand of a loving God is a scalpel removing a cancerous tumor and healing our world.